to. I want to teach. I just want to exhort you a little further. Bless the Lord. Some things you may hear again. Amen. Some things I'll reiterate. Praise the Lord. But uh, want to exhort you more in the word of the Lord. Amen. I'll be teaching part two of living through nothing. Part two of living through nothing. Amen. And I will read first Kings uh, chapter 18 verse uh, 44 through 46. Bless the Lord. First Kings um, chapter 18 verse 44 through 46. Praise the Lord. And it reads, then it came to pass the seventh time that he said, there is a cloud as small as a man's hand rising out of the sea. So he said, go up and say to Ahab, repair your chariots and go down before the rain stops you. Now what happened in the meantime, that the sky became black with clouds and wind and there was a heavy rain. So Ahab rolled away and went to Zeril and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he girded up his loins and ran ahead of Ahab to the entrance of Zeril. Amen. And so just backdrop, very familiar passage. Uh, Elijah, the man of God, was appointed by God to preach and prophesy in the land. We understand there was a, a drought in the land for three and a half years. Uh, we could relate, amen, there was not only a drought, they, they were in recession, they were in famine. It was long standing. Uh, people suffered. There was a famine in the land and the people were weary because of it. And enough was enough. And actually, it came about because the people had turned from God. Hallelujah. There was sin that needed to be dealt with first because the people started praying to another God. Amen. And even Elijah was, uh, uh, bless the Lord, known as the troubler. Amen. Hallelujah. But uh, the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came to Elijah. And Elijah said to Ahab, I know there has been uh, a three and a half year drought. Hallelujah. He said, but there's a turnaround on the way, and I hear the sound of a heavy rain, or he said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. What do you do? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. If, if you were in that day, can you imagine after not seeing a cloud rain for three and a half years, amen, and then there's a prophet that comes on the scene, bless the Lord, and said there's about to be an abundance of rain. What do you do? Uh, there's a, a, a variety of reactions that could have took place. Somebody probably would have, could have said, uh, I don't hear any sound of rain. It hasn't rained here for three years. What makes you think today will be any different? What does he know about it? Who is this guy, right? But Elijah spoke out the prophetic word that there is a sound of an abundance of rain. And you have to know, amen, that as believers and prophetic people, we have to know that many times God is, is telling us to declare some things by faith or to speak it out before we see it, bless the Lord, or hear the slightest indication of anything happening. And that's my first point I want to deal with tonight, declare by faith. If you're with me, just type that in, declare by faith. Now, the prophet gave the word to even Ahab, and apparently Ahab believed what Elijah told him because he got up and ate, praise the Lord. And then Elijah went to the top of Mount Carmel with his servant, got down on his knees and prayed, and then told his servant to go look towards the sea. We know the story. The servant went down and looked toward the sea and came back and said, there is nothing, no sign of rain, no wind, no nothing. What happens when you go to look for something and there is nothing? You know, let's be honest. Praise the Lord. Uh, sometime when you go to look for God said and you see that thing hasn't manifested yet, what happens? Come on. Sometime our natural mind tells us, well, maybe we miss God. Maybe God wasn't telling me that. Maybe it's not God's will. Maybe it's not possible. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And oftentimes the devil brings doubt in when we are looking. And you have to be careful about your first notion or what thoughts come into your mind. Bless the Lord when something does not manifest. 
Bless the Lord. I remember one time I was in a shoe store, amen, and there was a sign in the shoe store that said, shoes uh, repaired here, but a miracle takes a little longer. What, what did Elijah say? Bless the Lord. When, when the servant came back so many times and said, there is nothing the prophet stood on the word that he had received. He stood on the prophetic word. He stood on the word that he had declared. And the prophet Elijah told the servant, go look again. Now, as I begin to ponder this text, bless the Lord, uh, it doesn't say how long it was before he went back the second time. When the prophet told him, go look again, uh, it's not recorded how long it was in the meantime. It might have been an hour. It may have been five minutes. Bless the Lord for the second time around. But nevertheless, he came back and said, there is nothing. It doesn't say that Elijah thought or felt. It doesn't say how Elijah thought or how he felt when there was still nothing. What about the times when, we, when, when I pray, when you pray, and the answer doesn't come one way or the other? There is nothing at all. Come on. You apply for the job and don't even hear back about the application. Just nothing. You go to the doctor and don't get the test results. And you figure they'll know what's going on. You think they must not be interested in me or, or uh, that must be a bad report. But it's amazing to me. It's not recorded in the text. Elijah didn't seem to be concerned about it because he sent his servant back a third time. Nothing. A fourth time, nothing. A fifth time, nothing. A sixth time, nothing. Should he just give up and go home? No, there is no indication of that. Because, beloved, I know, amen, that, that, that we're in this thing and we're in this walk with God, but sometimes our answer does not come right away. And it doesn't mean that you're in error. It doesn't mean that you've missed God. It doesn't mean that you are out of whack. But sometimes the answer doesn't come right away. Do I have a witness on this line? Do I have a witness out there? It doesn't come right away. And we need to establish that. Sometimes our answer doesn't come right away. Bless the Lord. And if you look over your fence and try to compare yourself among yourself or you compare yourself to somebody else that's believing God for the same thing that you are and seem like they got their answer right away, bless the Lord. That's why we don't compare ourselves among ourselves. I remember, blessed Lord, when I was growing up in church and people uh, uh, were prayed for. And they thought if they weren't healed immediately, bless the Lord, that they didn't get healed. Come on. If they came to the altar and got prayed and they went back to the doctor and it didn't seem like it manifested right away, that they didn't get healed. Bless the Lord. They went to the altar. Preacher laid hands on them. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And you know, you want deliverance and the preacher laid hands on you. And then you walk in victory for three days. But then that's on Sunday. Then by Thursday, bless the Lord, you still find yourself fighting some temptation and some urges. Praise the Lord. You feel like deliverance didn't happen. But you got to understand sometimes the healing is gradual. Sometimes deliverance is a process. Come on, hallelujah. Even when Jesus in the Gospels healed the, the blind man, but he laid hands on him, praise the Lord. And he said, what do you see now? And he said, I see a little bit better, but I see me in his trees. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, no, that's not it. Bless the Lord. You need to see clearly. We don't want you to halfway see. He, he was coming to a gradual healing, but the fullness of that was not manifested yet. So what did he do? He laid hands again a second time and then said, now, what do you see? See, sometimes the reason we don't get total freedom is because in the middle of a process, we stop. And we regress backwards. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. And we stop when the work has started. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because we didn't get it all at once. We feel like it's not working. Praise the Lord. But you got to know that sometimes healing is a process, and he's started a work on the inside of you. And when you're in the middle of process, you can't back up, or you're not going to reach the totality of what you believe in God for. You got to hang in there. Elijah did. He sent the servant back, bless the Lord, even up to six times, and bless the Lord, it was still nothing. It was still a big, fat zero. Bless the Lord, hallelujah. Some things are gradual. Stop saying it's not getting better. 
Stop saying things aren't changing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. It is changing. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. But did the servant, even in, that, in, in this story, did the servant know what he was looking for? See, do we look for God in our situation but don't know what to look for? See, sometimes if you're not careful, we often walk right by what God is trying to show us and miss it all together. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but there's some times, bless the Lord, when you're not sure what you're looking for, you miss what God is doing. I remember years ago I read a book by Oral Roberts, bless the Lord, and he said miracles pass us by every day. But we've got to tune in to what God is trying to say to us or show us. See, because sometimes if you're not looking for something, you will miss it. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. But the servant would have missed it if he hadn't been looking for something, bless the Lord, or if he wasn't persistent. Glory to God. They would have missed the sign God was trying to give them if, if they weren't sure what they were looking for or wasn't persistent. And Elijah pressed him uh, uh, to go back a seventh time. Go look again. Perk up your ears. Go look again. Open your eyes. Go look again. And the servant came back this time and said, Behold, there is a little cloud. Glory to God. There is a small cloud the size of a man's hand. Now watch this. And I dealt with this on Sunday. Elijah did not belittle the fact that it was a very small cloud in a very big sky. Hear me what I'm saying tonight. Glory to God. And let this be established in your heart. Let me put some more weight on this so it can be established in your heart. Hallelujah. It was the beginning of a bigger storm cloud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It started small, but it was the beginning of a bigger storm cloud. The answer was beginning to take shape. Come on, here's my second point tonight. Type this in. The small is just the beginning. The small is just the beginning. And if you and I don't renew our mind on the right perspective of how we see things, we'll miss it. The small is just the beginning. This was the beginning of the answer. The cloud would get darker. The cloud would get bigger. Come on here. Glory, the wind would pick up. This was just the beginning. You, you know, uh, I, as I was studying this, I began to think about, bless the Lord, you know, my wife, amen, and I is working on something, bless the Lord. And, you know, for me to work on something, I, I just sometimes can't jump right in, bless the Lord, hallelujah, it got to you know, uh, work on my brain and make sense. Glory to God. But when we're coming into agreement on working on something, bless the Lord, hallelujah, she'll show me something, bless the Lord, hallelujah, and she'll show me the end result. Come on, bless the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And so when we're coming into agreement that we're moving in this direction, bless the Lord, we got to keep in mind that this is the end result. And then we got to have conversation and say, now when this thing may start, it may look like this, but we're not focused on this. Come on here, glory to God, because we're not staying at this. Glory to God, this is the end result. And so, hallelujah, th though the beginning may seem small, that's not where we're staying. Glory to God. This is the latter end. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is how we'll begin, but the goal is this is what we're trying to get to. And so the prophet, I feel God tonight, the prophet had a prophetic picture that I'm not worried about the little cloud because this is just the beginning of the answer. This thing is going to expand. This is going to increase. Is that all right? And so what am I saying to somebody tonight? You might not see the preferred thing that you want at the beginning. Woo! But if you keep your mind on the goal, praise the Lord. If you keep your mind on the goal that you're trying to get to, you can endure the process. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I said if you keep your mind on the goal you're trying to get to, you can endure the process. Oh, I'm not worried about the smallness of that right now because that's not the end of it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so I believe the prophet had a prophetic picture. Glory to God in his mind. I'm not worried about the small cloud because this is only the beginning of the answer. Woo! It's not the end of the answer. It is the beginning of the answer. And so, you know, we, we shrug off things. Yes, we do. We shrug off things in the beginning. 
of God's answer to us. Oh, that's only a part-time job. Oh, oh, it just pays minimum wage. Oh, oh, that's only a couple of days a week. And see, we often prevent things from opening up because we think it doesn't amount to a hill of beans. And so we say stuff like, oh, I'm a little better today, but I'm not well. Come on here. No, no, no. You Sometimes you got to cut off the negativity and stick with what you believe in God for. How you doing? I'm a little bit better today. Come on here. Now, if I'm a little bit better, now, 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 in, my, in my mind, everybody know I may not be where I want to be, but I'm going to let my confession be I'm a little bit better today. I don't want to tag on, but I'm still not well. Glory to God because I'm getting better every day. Hallelujah. It's how you see your thing. And, and, and if I can feel a little bit better, come on that can increase to a whole lot better. How you doing? I'm better than I've been. Come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You, you know, you know. if you ask somebody, bless the Lord, hallelujah, how you doing? Bless the Lord, sick in the hospital. How, are you any better? Praise the Lord. Sometimes they say, well, I'm no worse. See, glory to, we, we got to learn how to appreciate the little bit that God is doing. Imagine the cloud the size of a man's hands. That was a lot to a servant who hadn't seen a cloud in a long time. Glory to God. You, you know, I have a dog, and so every night, bless the Lord, I give my dog a little treat. Not, not a whole one. I break it up and give him a little treat. Is that all right? Bless the Lord. And see, Goldie thinks that that little treat is better than no treat. I can't get nobody. Hallelujah. And, 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 and she quickly accepts it, glory to God, and will come back for more later, glory to God. And see, we got to learn how to start thanking God for the little bit, the little cloud, the part-time job, the little bit of improvement, the little bit of improvement, the little better health, praise the Lord. And more will come if we value what God is starting to do. Woo! We have to value what God is starting to do. Because we have a word that says, glory to God, hallelujah, he that have begun a good work in you shall perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. We have to value what God is starting to do. You got to wake up every day and be like the power of God is working in me and I'm getting better every day. Huh? You got to renew your mind. The power of God is working in me, and I'm getting better every day. Why don't you type that in? I'm getting better every day. Glory to God. But every day I'm getting better. Glory to God. And tomorrow I'll be stronger than I was today. The power of God is working in me, and I'm getting better every day. Because the little cloud speaks to me of hope. See, when we are waiting on God, we need the hope. We need hope to have something to look forward to. When you're waiting on God, we need hope to have something to look forward to. Anybody out there looking forward to something, bless the Lord. And sometimes people say, well, my situation is so hopeless, nothing is going to happen. But when you have hope, you can wait for it to happen. Woo, I'm talking good tonight. When you have hope, bless the Lord, you can wait for it to happen. Why? Because the Bible says hope maketh not a shame. We compromise when we lose hope. We do something different when we lose hope. We do something different when we feel like there's no use. But you have to be very careful because the Bible says in Proverbs 13 and 12 that hope deferred makes the heart sick. You've got to have hope while you're waiting or you will end up depressed or giving up. See, why Elijah was praying and sending his servant to look, bless the Lord, he was in patience, he was in hope, glory to God, and that sustained him until he saw the manifestation. Elijah knew that the small cloud meant that a big work was on the way. And he took that as a sign and he told Ahab, in faith, prepare your chariot, go down before the rain stops you. He did all that based on the prophetic word and a small sign. <laughs> Anybody got a big prophetic word and a small sign, but you will take it and run with it? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Based only on the sighting of the cloud that was, that was small as a man's hand, he knew that a heavy rain was on the way. 
Oh, am I helping you tonight? Glory to God. But you got to keep focused. Now, now here's my next point. Do something when you see something. See, the Bible says that the signs and wonders will confirm the word. And so when God starts sending signs in your life to confirm the word, to confirm the prophecy, to confirm what you've been hearing, to confirm what the word is saying, do something when you see something. Woo! The servant had already seen some visible results, a very small sign of rain. Bless the Lord. So he, so in other words, he did need to keep going. So when he starts seeing the sign, Elijah gave him a different instruction and said, now go tell them that the rain is coming. Elijah sent him to Ahab. Bless the Lord. said, hitch up your chariot and get down before the rain stop you. See, when you... You, you do something when you see something. Glory to God. This reminds me of weather reports. You know, you get a weather report. It says, a weather report. It says, take cover. You know, some of you got an amber alert today of you in the uh, Houston area. Bless tor tornado and all of this stuff. Take cover. Go to storm for shelter. Get a safe place and stay there. High winds are coming. Flash flood is predicted. See, that's the thing we got to be. When God is showing us signs, we ought to do something. Many times people uh, completely ignore the warnings. And God is trying to show you, and you sitting there feeling so forsaken and so, and, and, and like God doesn't care and nothing is happening, and you getting a little bit better, and things are turning around little by little, and you acting like God isn't doing anything. Glory to God. But the Lord sends warnings, He gives signs. <laughs> so that you can move in a different direction. And when the storm comes, bless the Lord, hallelujah, people can't get out. Even when Katrina and other dangerous events, hallelujah, some stuff could have been prevented if people would have heeded the warnings. So God says, when I give you a sign, stop acting like nothing is happening. Stop saying glory to God, hallelujah, nothing is moving in my direction. Nothing is moving in my favor. Bless the Lord. You got to do something by faith when you see something. Oh, I saw something. Let me go give an instruction to Ahab to hitch up his chariot because there's a rain that's coming. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Elijah had faith that God was in rain, and he did something when God started giving him signs. Glory to God. Here's my next point. There's power in perseverance. Hallelujah. There's power in perseverance. The Bible says, amen, in verse 43, the seventh time the, service report, the servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. Folks, this thing has been so much in my spirit because one of the most valuable lessons on prayer is found right here. It is perseverance. What does that mean? It means praying on and on in spite of no sign of your prayer being answered. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And folks, we're called, amen. The Bible says you are my disciples when you continue in my word. You're my disciples when you can continue, not when everything is just well, not when everything is happening for you, not when you're just on the mountaintop, but in every season. You are my disciples when you can continue in my word. And one of the most value, it means pr perseverance. It means praying on and on in spite of no sign of your prayer being answered. It means holding on to the word that God has given you and continuing to expect to see the answer manifest. I'm praying and praying until I see a sign that this thing is breaking through. And you got to remember, this kind of praying is still needed even when God has already promised the answer. Oh, Lord. This is the whole thing about this text that, that's been messing me up because even though he had a prophetic word, even though he had a promise, bless the Lord, this kind of praying was still needed when God had already promised. He could have said, well, God, you already said it. I can go sit on my couch and do nothing. No, 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 praise the Lord. Elijah was asked by God, hallelujah, Elijah was asked by God to present himself for Ahab, and God promised to send rain in the land. Watch this. The promise was the surety 
that enabled Elijah to pray on. Oh, Lord. I'm going to say that again. The promise to send rain was the surety that enabled Elijah to pray on. See, the reason why, oh, Lord. See, the promise that should motivate us to pray on. <laughs> the reason you can pray like you pray and seek God like glory to God, hallelujah, that, that you can because you know you have a word over your life and he's not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should pray. And the reason why we can pray, glory to God, the promise was the sure, it enabled me to pray. That's why we can contend for the things that we're continuing on because we have a word on it. Reason you can keep on praying for your children because you have a promise that said the seed of the righteous will be delivered. The reason you can keep on praying for healing because his word says by his stripes you were healed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's why you can go ahead on to God in prayer because I got a promise. It was the promise of rain coming that motivated him to pray on. Woo, my God, hallelujah, hallelujah. And you, and folks ask you, how can you pray like that? Because I got a promise, glory to God, because I got a God said, because God has spoken some things over my life, glory to God. And on Mount Carmel, the prophet postured, bent his head down between his knees, glory to God, hallelujah. Now, this was, this was, this was something because, hallelujah, the posture of being bent down to the ground, and putting his face between his knees was similar, was similar to a posture that women of those times adopted when giving birth to their children. I can't get nobody in here. And so it seems like that Elijah was undergoing, undergoing intense labor pains. He was giving birth to rain through prayer. Oh, Jesus. I said he was giving birth. I hope you're hearing me tonight. Uh to the rain through prayer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He knew within himself that rain was bound to come. However, he obeyed whatever God told him to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He birthed that thing through, through prayer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it was needed. When I pondered on this text, it was needed. That continuous prayer was needed, bless the Lord. Because of his continuous prayer life, he would not be discouraged even when six times he heard there is nothing. It ain't a point, but it, it's not one of my points tonight, but it's a good nugget. Continuous prayer blocks discouragement. Whew. I said continuous prayer blocks discouragement. How could he keep on going with a report, there is nothing, there is nothing, there is nothing, because he was postured in prayer. You know, you don't have to talk about you, you, you yourself. I can talk about myself. You know, in this hour, it's a hard task being a pastor. And in a realm of a day, you can get so many different phone calls, you know, good phone calls, negative phone calls, good stuff, good news, bad news. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. But, but what comes in, and it's very easy for discouragement to, keep, to kick in, but what keeps you going day after day? It's a continuous prayer life. It's knowing that not only am I praying for myself, not only do I know I have family praying, but I have intercessors that are praying. And because intercession is being made, that blocks discouragement. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Glory to God. I, I was talking, you know, to one of my members last night, bless the Lord, who's going through a time, uh, you know, a bereavement. And what she said, glory to God, was I can literally feel the prayers of the saints. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm getting better day by day. Don't mean you're not going to feel something. Don't mean you're not going to feel some type of way. But the prayers of the righteous availeth much. And continuous prayer blocks discouragement. How can he keep on praying? Praying and not get discouraged and tell his servant, okay, go home. Maybe I missed God because he stayed in a place of prayer. Glory to God. Continuous prayer was needed so that he wouldn't be discouraged. 
Why are you not discouraged? Because I'm on my face before God. Why are you not discouraged? Because I keep on showing up to the house of God. Why are you not discouraged? Because I keep on encouraging myself in the Lord. God sends encouragement. Hallelujah. I keep coming to church and getting his presence. Glory to God. And all that blocks discouragement. And I can get up another day and keep on believing God even if nothing is, is happening. Here's what the Lord told me to tell you. You will preserve in prayer. And the seven times were reported to him that a cloud the size of a man's hand was rising from the sea. He preserved in prayer. He preserved in prayer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And see, this is what happens with us. We stop praying because we can't see any tangible difference with our natural eyes. We allow our circumstances to get between God and us instead of putting God between us and our circumstances. But Elijah, hear me tonight, he held his holy ground. Hallelujah. And this is the hour you got to learn how to hold your holy ground. He stood on the promise that God had given him. I think Elijah would have prayed 10,000 times if that's what it took. Hallelujah. But between the sixth and the seventh prayer, there was a shift in the atmospheric pressure. Hallelujah. And after the seventh prayer, Elijah, glory to God, he said, I can't. His servant came back with something and said, I see a small cloud the size of a man's hand. Glory to God. I can't help but ask a, a counterfactual question. What if Elijah, hear me tonight, because there's power, there's breakthrough in your perseverance. This is what the Lord is saying. Glory to God. What if Elijah had quit praying after the sixth prayer? What if he had stopped looking after the sixth time? What if they had stopped marching around the walls of Jericho on the sixth day? What if they refused to shout, glory to God, when the instruction was to shout? The obvious answer is they would have def defaulted on the promise and forfeited the miracle. Watch this. But Elijah prayed through and God came through. Woo! Let me pause right there. I said, but Elijah prayed through and God came through. Hear me, for anybody that will receive it tonight, when you pray it through, God will come through. Ah, yes, 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 yes. I said, when you pray it through, hallelujah, God will come through. But when Elijah prayed through, God came through. Woo. And I said, Lord, when did this happen? And the Lord took me back, I believe, to verse 45. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. The Bible said, uh, uh, the text said, as he prayed, and the prophet and the man looked, and as he prayed, and he looked, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then there was a small cloud the size of a man had, and the Bible says, hallelujah, and do it. And in the meantime, in the meanwhile, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, because they were in expectation, because they were in action. In the meantime, while they was doing what they was doing, the sky turned black and heavy wind. Yeah, what is that verse that now would happen? In the meantime, glory to God. <laughs> so you hating on my small beginning, but in the meantime, or in the meanwhile, while they have been praying, glory to God, while they were giving the report, glory to God, the sky turned black, the landscape and rail dro and raindrops fell for the first time, and it was a heavy rain. Woo, I hope you're receiving this tonight. I hope you're receiving this tonight. Hallelujah, bless the Lord. It's easy to give up on your dreams, on your miracles, and give up on, on the promises of God. We lose heart, we lose patience, we lose faith. And like a slow leak, it often happens without us knowing it. Or when our prayer life gets on flat. Come on here. Hallelujah. Come on. And sometimes you get weary. Yeah, sometimes you get weary. Sometimes you, you, you hard believe in God for something. And then, quite frankly, why did you stop? Because you got tired of asking. Oh. Come on. You ever stop doing something? Did something major happen? No, I just got tired of asking. It felt like God put me on hold, so I hung up. Oh, come on, that's somebody's testimony. You felt like God put you on hold, so you hung up. 
And you ain't prayed about that thing in a long time. Come on here. But sometimes you need another conversation. You need to hear another word that will reactivate your faith so that you can start circling that miracle again. Maybe closing out this year, there's some dream that God wants to resurrect. Some of you felt like God put you on hold, so you just hung up. You don't even want a man of God no more. Just get a man. Come on here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You, you ain't even after. You, you didn't lower your standards so down now. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Because you got tired of asking. Tired of waiting. And the reason many of us give up too soon is we feel like we failed. We, we have failed. And if God, if we failed. We feel like we failed if God didn't answer our, our prayer right away. But the prophet that heard the word still had to wait. He still had to pray it through. The only way this thing can fail is if you stop praying. Prayer is a no-lose proposition. And I come to let somebody know tonight, bless the Lord, that your best days are here. And I don't care if it doesn't even look like it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. God has a way of turning things around suddenly. God has a way, bless the Lord, of creating kairos moments, which are God-ordained, God-opportune moments. So you have to remember when times are tough, don't give up. Because God is famous for his suddenly. Woo, did you hear what I said? When, when times are don't give up, God is famous for the suddenly. He'll do things all of a sudden. And between the last time you prayed and this time you prayed, there was a suddenly. I ain't see that cloud five minutes ago, and now I'm seeing stuff. Huh? Yesterday I was broke, and today I'm blessed. You got to remember when times are tough, don't give up. God is famous for the suddenly. Huh. And it happened all of a sudden. That's why you can never confuse your condition for your position. Oh, I, need to, I need to speak this to somebody tonight. I need to re reignite faith on the inside of somebody tonight. Don't doubt what God has promised you. In the process of you believing God, listen, delay will occur. Come on, I, I know you went to the revival and they said no more delay. But sometime when you are contending for some things in your faith, delay will occur. Waiting is required. But when you persistently pray and believe God, results will come. See, I'm going to be the real type of preacher that's going to tell you straight up how to walk this thing out by faith. And when you see the small list of signs, such as a small cloud, you ought to start rejoicing because the answer is on the way. Glory to God. And when you see those small signs, you got to start preparing. Bless the Lord, because God will give you a kairos moment. Hallelujah. And here's what the Lord is saying. Follow the signs of the promise. Stop acting like nothing is happening. God is moving on your behalf. He said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. He said, before anything manifested, and, 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 I, and I'm almost done with this. Before anything manifested, glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, he said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. That means, hallelujah, that means my ear has picked up the signal in the airwaves. You know, sound means vibrations. Glory to God. Elijah's ear picked up the vibrations that something was coming. I can't see it. I can't touch it. I don't feel it, but it's on the way. How do you know it's on the way? Because it keeps getting louder all the time. You ever had a rumbling in your spirit? You, you just knew down on the inside that something was breaking through, something was about to happen. See, when a train is coming your way, you feel the vibrations before it arrives. When large hail is coming your way, you can hear it blocks away. Same thing happened when 120 men and women were gathering up a room waiting for promised power. The Bible says, suddenly there came a sound from heaven. What? They were waiting, and then there was a suddenly. I told you God is famous for the suddenly. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There was a sound. Hallelujah. There was a sound. The Bible said like a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house where they were sitting. Suddenly clothing tongues came upon them and they were filled with as a fire and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Elijah said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. I hear the sound of rain. That rain meant life, recovery, restoration. Rivers going to rush again. Things are going to flourish again. Glory to God. I'm letting you know. I don't care if you're in a drought tonight. It's going to rain again. He's going to rain upon your fields. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain, but I don't see evidence. I don't see a sound, but I hear it. And I'm closing on this. There is a sound. Glory to God. But the word sound does not just mean racket. It means proclamation. He didn't just hear it. He proclaimed it. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. It was a decree in the spirit realm. So you got to pick up some things in the spirit. You got to call things that be not as though they were. Glory to God. You got to call. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What was the rain? It was the result of answered prayer. It was the result of what God is saying. Glory to God. The rain was the only way. But the rain was on the way, but there's a work that had to be done, and you got to pray it through. Hallelujah. Glory. You got to push through. What they say, push means pray until something happens. You got to push this thing through. Paul told the church, I, I travail with you until Christ be formed in you. We just wanted to be so happy. You're so <coughs> We just want it to happen. We just want to be automatic. We just want to come, hear the word, and sit down and like, okay, it's just going to happen. No, you got to push this thing through. Come on. Glory to God. No, no woman has a baby without labor. You got to push this thing through. Every miracle, every breakthrough, every prodigal son who comes home, every son or daughter who was delivered from drugs perversion, somebody has to pray. Come on here. Somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time and prayed for me. And some of you by the Holy Ghost, you may have adult children, you may have teenage children, you may have, have, have people in your family that have turned their back from God, and you stop praying, glory to God, hallelujah, for the salvation of their soul. You, 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 you stop turning up the heat and praying that they be saved for real and love God with their whole heart. What would it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose their soul? Well, my child doing all right. I don't want them just to do all right. I want them saved. Were well, they successful? I don't just want them to be successful. I want them saved for real. I want them served in God for real. Were well, they independent? They can take care of themselves. They out of my hair. I don't just want them out of my hair. I want them saved for real. Come on here. Glory to God. And you ought to labor. You ought to believe God for the salvation Woo, of your seed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just want to let, let them be bound by perversion, bound by sin. The way, Come on here. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. I know you love them, but do you love them? Do you love their soul? Do you, you, are you care much about their soul? My children doing good. Doing good how? Okay, in the natural, but how they look in the spirit. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Well, I've been praying, but keep on praying. And don't light up praying. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He put his head between his knees and began to labor in prayer for what he heard in the spirit. Oh, Jesus. Woo! He put his head between his knees and began to labor in prayer for what he heard in the spirit. He sent his servant to look for the answer. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You got to keep on praying. When you got a word for God in your spirit, you got to keep on praying. I tell you, you can get a house, but after you get the house, you still got to keep on praying. <laughs> you can get a job, but after you get a job, you still got to keep on praying. 
Come on. You can get married. Even after you get married, you still got to keep on praying. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, because you can have a prophetic word. You can have a word from the Lord. Hallelujah. And experience delay. Oh, it's all through the word. And I'm closing on this. But Daniel prayed for 20 days with no evidence that God heard him. But on the 21st day, all of a sudden, breakthrough came. Michael, the warring angel, broke into the battle, and Gabriel got the message through. God will do whatever it takes to get it to you if you don't quit. Woo! My God. Hallelujah. Keep on praying. Keep on praising. Keep on confessing. Keep on tithing. Keep on sowing. Keep on singing. Keep on dancing. Don't let the devil see you sweat. Because I know it's cliche, but it's really real tonight. Delay is not denial. Sometimes delay is part of the process. Woo! Woo! My God. Delay doesn't cancel out the promise of God. Delay is not denial. Abraham was delayed 25 years before he had Isaac, but he wasn't, delight, wasn't, but he wasn't denied. Joseph was delayed 15 years. Glory to God, but not denied. Lazarus was delayed four years, four days. Lazarus was delayed four days, but wasn't denied. Habakkuk 2 and 3 says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But in the end, it will speak and will not lie, though it tarry, though it delays, though it stalls. Wait for it because it will surely come and will not tarry. <laughs> How you like that? It will tarry, but wait for it because it's going to surely come and will not tarry. Hallelujah. It'll tarry, but then it won't tarry. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It'll tarry, but when it show up, it's going to show up in its appointed time. Woo, my God. God is not a man. I'm getting happy that he should lie. Glory to God, nor the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, would he not bring it to pass? Every time you pray, you put pressure on the spirit realm, and you are fulfilling the expectancy that the clouds are bringing your blessing. Glory to God. Sometimes delay is just part of the process. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But God knows even after delay how to redeem the time. God knows even after delay how to restore unto you the years that the canker worm and the pomace worm and uh, that the canker worm and the pommel worm and the locusts have eaten up. Come on here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many know what it's like out there? Glory to God to deal with some delays. Woo, my God. Hallelujah. Come on. Hallelujah. He may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. But I'm still praying. I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to let the delay cause me to turn my plow. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm not going to let the delay cause me to look back. I'm not going to let the delay cause me to turn around. Every time the servant brought back a negative report, he kept on praying. Go back to the sea and look again. I'm going to pray. You keep looking. <laughs> I'm going to pray. You keep expecting. I'm going to pray. We're going to stay in agreement. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then he got a rainbow word. It's a little cloud that's coming. It was in the small. I'm closing on this, but it was in the small. Hallelujah. He said, I see a small cloud like a man's hand. It didn't look like much. Watch this. But Elijah's faith grabbed a hold to it. See, when you in faith, it might not look like it might not look like much, but when your faith grab a hold to it, you take it and run with it. There's something about faith that lets you see greatness in small things. See, faith can see a weapon of mass destruction in the jawbone of an ass. Faith can see a meal for a multitude with two fish and five loaves of bread. Faith can see an oil business in a room full of empty jars. Come on here, like the widow woman. Faith can see, glory to God, a king in a simple, smelly shepherd boy like David. Glory to God. A servant saw a little cloud, but Elijah saw a river flowing, ground soaking, a drought bursting rainstorm. I don't care how big your problem is. Or how long it's existed. The promises 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sometimes it can come in a little form, but you got, the Bible says, oh, I'm getting happy. The Bible says all it takes is faith the size of a mustard seed, and you can, com you can command the mountains to jump into the sea, and they'll have to go. Elijah heard it in the spirit. He prophesied it with his mouth, and he saw it with his eyes. Woo! Elijah heard it in the spirit. He prophesied it with his mouth, and he saw it with his eyes. Somebody's getting ready to see a manifestation. But you got to learn how to live through nothing. You got to learn how to take God at his word. You got to learn how to take the small stuff. and see some magnificent things come out of it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You got to learn how to see the beauty in ashes. You got to learn how to waver. You, not, not, you learn how to not waver. We got to learn how to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. He heard it in the spirit. He prophesied it with his mouth, and he saw it with his eyes. Glory to God. What are you proclaiming? What are you speaking? And he saw it with his eyes. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for grace on this word tonight. I thank that I've obeyed you and given your people the word of the Lord. I thank you, Lord, that we are strengthened tonight in our inner man. And I thank you that it's producing a fruitful harvest. Thank you for your word tonight. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, that we'll, we'll walk in. We'll, we'll be the recipients of your word. And thank you that we'll never be the same. In Jesus' name. Cause us to triumph. Glory to God in every circumstance, in every situation. Let us hold fast to our confession of faith. And we thank you for victory tonight. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why don't you give God praise right there in your home for what you heard tonight. Hallelujah for what you've heard, for what you've heard, for what you've heard. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I, I hope this word is established in your heart, established even the more. And you're going to run on to see what the end is going to be. If you heard something that blessed you,